Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Margaret Fontana Media podcast, video, Zoom show. Everything has kind of, we, we've stepped up our game. So today I have with me Dawn Del Russo, and perhaps you're looking at her and you're thinking, I've seen her before. You may have seen her on TV. You may have seen her on different shows. And so Dawn is an on-air style expert. I'm reading her bio off of Instagram because it's like so robust. Uh, so she's an on-air style expert and event host. She's been on Access Hollywood, New York Live. I've seen you a lot on New York Live. Yes, I do that show pretty often. I love New York Live. Yeah. Um, e, Vogue Italia, which yes. is pretty that's pretty hot. You got to tell me about, and I, I want to talk about your trip. I saw you went to Milan. Yeah. Too. Yes. Um, so you're also the CEO of Bella Dawn. You're an author. You run another brand, which is live the yes. which I, which we need to talk about. Um, I know you're into Reiki, which is very cool. And Reiki is like energy, energy. right? It's like energy. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, okay. There's so much stuff you're doing, but also, you're doing these live cooking segments with, oh my God. I was like, I didn't know she knew how to cook. Um, yeah. And I've been watching you do these like live cooking segments. So anyway, yeah. that's her bio. So welcome Dawn Del Russo. I'm so happy to see you. You look amazing. You're so Thank tan you. and gorgeous. So hello. Hi, I'm so happy to talk to you again. It's been, we've had a relationship for the longest time. We've always, always kind of I been know. in the industry together. So it's been exciting to see all these years. <laughs> I know. So just going back, like historically, so Dawn and I, back when I started my blog, this was like 2008, 2009, my blog was called, it still, I still have it up. It's italianamericangirl.com. So Dawn was local, like I was in uh, Union, Dawn had her business um, up there as well. Mm -hmm. And I connected with her through like some Italian, I don't remember how I found you. Was it the Italian Tribune or no? Cause I was. Oh there. yeah, yeah. I think, I think that's what it was because yeah. I think, all right, right. So I like sent you and it wasn't like as vicious as it is now with like email and text and all this <laughs> stuff. Like, I think it was like old school, like, hi. I had to it was. <laughs> It was, it was like, so casual, nice. yeah. So I went to Dawn's store, her, yeah. actually her, your office and your, um, salon. Right. And, yeah. um, I could say salon, but it was like, what do you, what did a you boutique. call yeah. a boutique. <laughs> And, um, and I did my first interview with like my camera, like my camera, which yeah. back then was like, like the first version of a DSLR. And I did it with that and I'm, I'm going to find it and um, I'll repost it at some point, but it was it pretty be cool. So fun to see. Yeah, yeah. Like we talked about all the things you were doing. So we go way back 2008, 2009. And I think, you know, we were originally kind of um, in that boat of, learning about media and online. So I invited Dawn on today because Dawn is like exploding online. She's got like one of the most successful brands. You have to watch her every day. She has a beautiful niece too, who makes all these debuts on her Insta stories. And uh, so I thought the, the best person to kind of talk about, you know, fashion, influencer, brand, how to work with brands, digital media, social media. And I actually always tell people about you too, you know, like people yeah. I work with, I'm like, follow this woman. Oh. I don't think I refer to as woman. I say, girl, follow this girl. I'm like, she's great. That's fine. <laughs> so I'll, let, I'll let you talk now, but tell me a little bit about you. Yeah. And, um, you know, I have all these great things to say about you. So Thank tell me, you. No, tell me about you. yeah, give, give yeah. me the lowdown on Dawn Del Rey. Yeah. Quite a journey. I'd have to say, um, it's the years go by so fast and it did start. I started with a boutique many, many years ago. That was my dream. It came true. I, I didn't realize at the time that I was visualizing it, but I was, and you know, got out of college, worked for my dad for a little bit and then made that happen and transition that to working with brands. And at the time, like you said, I didn't even know that I was an influencer or that I was, you know, in that brand consulting media type of business. I just was, you know, trying to get the products that I was selling in my store on TV and in magazines. And how can I do that? Okay, well, let me pitch them and let me see where that goes. And it kind of evolved very, very organically and naturally and um, built relationships with brands over the years. Now it has become a business in itself that I, you know, I didn't really, 
I never called it that, but I realize now that that's, you know, that media brand relationship thing that was happening became this big influencer thing. And um, I still don't always put myself in that category, but it's it kind of just naturally, I guess, became what I, I, I am on a very, on a small scale, I say, in the social media world, but honestly, um, I've worked with some like really, really incredible brands over the years, big and small from, you know, Blue Nile and Kohl's and H&M to really small new brands that are come making their way up. And I got to see them grow and end up in big stores like Bloomingdale's and Macy's. So it's just been, it's been really fun. So, uh, you know, so just to kind of give people an idea about you. So you are the brand. I mean, it's basically like Don Del Russo is the brand because, you know, you have all this expertise in obviously fashion and, um, you know, in working with those brands. And I know you work with a lot of PR companies who contact you. I, I love when you do unboxings too. Oh, but, thanks. They're fun. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm like, wow, she gets so much stuff every week. Um, and <laughs> So, you know, tell me about just kind of building more about your personal brand. So I want, I'm, whoever's going to watch this, I want them to learn a little bit about how long it took you actually to build the personal brand and especially yeah. online and in digital, because everybody thinks it's like, boom, oh my everybody. God, you're an influencer, you're this, you're yeah. that. But people say it all the time. They're like, oh, wow, that's so awesome what you do. And, and I'm like, first of all, it's a nonstop game that it never ends. This is not like, oh, you get to somewhere and now you're good. I feel like you're constantly, when it's your own business, you're, you're just constantly trying to reach for new things, grow things, keep it going, build relationships. My, um, my biggest thing I think with any of it is really making sure that you you know, know who you're working with. And I, I like, I, I was lucky to work with PR brands and it started with TV and have those relationships with them where, you know, we talk a lot and I get to hear about the new products that they have and the new um, brands that they're working with. And then from that connect with them and say like, Hey, this is, I work, I do a lot with fashion and, and beauty and some lifestyle. And, the, and like you mentioned, the cooking, the cooking kind of started drizzling in now and um some of those brands are coming through actually which is really really exciting and i always tell everyone you know uh, girls especially are like oh you have to have you know i have to build my following build my following and i need a hundred thousand followers and you don't honestly you really really don't you you know the authenticity is important the engagement is important and i always compare it to working with or not working with but the relationship that you have with your friends and family and they trust you. You know, they say like, if I'm wearing a necklace, I can't tell you how many friends and family say to me, where did you get that? And then go and buy it. And it has nothing to do with, you know, that I have so many followers and that's the reason why people are buying it. It's because it's real and authentic. And I've worked hard to make sure that's always what I, yeah. what I, what I was and what I continue to be. Mm -hmm. And, um, if you're starting out in this and it is something that you're looking to do, it's important to, if you are reaching out to a brand, make it someone that you like, you know, that you already like. If it's, if you always buy sunglasses from a certain company or you bought a pair of sunglasses and you like it, share that on your Instagram, share that on your stories, and then reach out to them and show them that you shared it and say, Hey, I, you know, it would be really cool to work with you or what content can I create for you? That's mm -hmm. always a good starting place is creating content for someone else. I mean, now we all know how important it is to get that for brands to have content, photos, video, now it's reels and IGTV and, you know, Facebook wants Facebook lives. If you can be a source for brands and create content for them where they don't have to do that and you can right. make a beautiful photograph or create a, a really awesome 15 second video that they can post, they absolutely love it and will come back to you when they are, when they do have budgets and they do want to uh, want to work with you. So, so you mentioned Instagram reels, you mentioned Facebook live, and I mean, you have a really like healthy, um, following on Instagram and I can tell it's like a very authentic following. You are not inflated by any means. Cause I mean, I think that's also a very like false kind of idea too about um, yeah. people building their brands online and like, Oh, I need 20,000 followers. And it's like, you yeah. can easily buy 20,000 followers, but those are yeah. all like bots and 
Yeah. So I think, I mean, can you speak to the, the, you know, just kind of talking about the authenticity, like always go for quality versus quantity, you know? Oh yeah. And it's like fine tuning. I mean, you have to, I think of it like as a circle of friends on Instagram or anywhere. And it's like, what conversations do you want to have with the people that are following you? And do you care? I mean, I, I want to have, I'm, I want more conversations. You know, I want to say, I want to, you know, swipe through who I'm following and see what they're doing and pay attention and kind of that to me is more important than how many that you have and you don't know what anybody is really doing. I mean, I've really over the years have made friends out of, out of who I follow and who follows back. And I do, it's so funny because anyone that follows, I always like go to their profile, look at their pictures. I mean, it's the first thing I do right. and try to like pay attention to that and see what they're doing. And I, I think, you know, you start to see that, whoever your followers are become are who you are, you know, and mm -hmm. resemble. Oh, that's do. a good one. Yeah. yeah. That, and I that's think that's excellent. Oh my God. I love that. <laughs> they are. And, and it's funny because you'll see that that's what you attract, you know, that's what you bring in. And the more that you do that, the more it, even as it grows and you add on and get more followers, you'll see that, that those people will influence you just the same as you influence them. And yeah. that's, you know, that's a big deal to me is that all of that is like, it stays the same and we can talk. And when there's comments, you're commenting back and forth. And I mean, I'm constantly DMing links to someone or someone I'm saying to them, where did you get those jeans? I love them. You know, I want to, I want to wear them. And we, I, I'll repost in my stories. If someone tells me like, mm -hmm. I just bought these sneakers. Like, this is who I bought these sneakers from, you know, cause right. I had them on. So. so in kind of like being on all the platforms and like, you know, you can't not be on, I know you're actually building a nice audience on TikTok. I've seen you're on there now. I, I think TikTok Damn, is, yeah. TikTok's great. Like what are your thoughts on TikTok for let's say the fashion you know, industry, or if you're like trying to build a brand? It's been really amazing. I've been on there since like, I guess last fall. And it's definitely easier to build following on there. I mean, I, in the last, what, six months, I've gotten to almost 9,000 followers in oh my God. time. So it's kind of, yeah, it's a, it's a really quick, and they do transfer over. I have to say that it's not, um, it's not all the same type of followers as Instagram. Like Instagram is so specific. My followers are very into like the same exact stuff as I am. And TikTok, because it's more fun, videos music and dancing some of that is over there and then when it does transfer over to instagram i think that they it's it's a different feeling so you don't yeah. always hold on to the, and the followers the same but it's just it really the editing on there is so easy that it helped me now with reels i mean it made it so much easier right. for me to do reels and i found this like niche that i'm really enjoying with these kind of transition videos where you take one outfit and then all of a sudden you're in a different one. I love that. And TikTok made it easy to do. I mean, I learned how to do that on there because the editing format is so simple. So I think no matter what, I like to experiment with new platforms and new technology and new social media. I'm the type of person who I like to learn new stuff. I'm constantly trying to figure out new platforms and yeah. things you know to try kind of like Gary Vaynerchuk who yeah. he's always like introducing new new sites and new apps um but I think for me and this is I recognize this just like a few weeks ago when Reels came out that even if TikTok disappears or you know whatever happens with it it taught me in the last six months so much that I wouldn't have learned anywhere else and now it made it so much easier to, tr to do on another, another site. And even with my YouTube videos, editing my YouTube videos has changed just from learning that. So what do you use there's when, always, when you edit on, on YouTube? Are you using the in edit or do you use what's I on I actually your... use iMovie. Still. I, yeah. yeah, I'm still in iMovie. I, I want to change. I want to do maybe Final Cut Pro, but um, I'm not, <laughs> that's, that's like, a lot. I feel it's a like lot. It is. It's a lot. And I mean, my videos on YouTube take me, I mean, they're not long videos, but they take me a couple hours to edit every time. 
And I'm impressed so, actually when I see you do Insta stories of you editing. I'm like, wow, she edits her own stuff. Like that's impressive. Yeah, very impressive. It's a, that's like, thank you. That's like late night work, you know, like <laughs> one o'clock in the morning <laughs> editing. Sometimes. But, but um, yeah, you know, I think when you are your own business, and you know, I've had I've had part time people and interns and all that stuff, but I think. You get forced, and I've always said this from day one, you get forced into having to learn everything right. because you may not have um, a budget to pay someone to edit all your videos, or you know, you may have someone and then you lose them and you don't want to lose the time. And that's happened to me a lot. I mean, there's been so, so many times when I had edit, video editors and photographers that I've worked with and that I've paid and you know, they're not available or I need this right away and it takes a month to get it and not you know, nothing against them. It's just mm -hmm. sometimes that's what you, you know, you do need to do it yourself just mm -hmm. to get it done. Yeah. So. so in kind of talking about like the brand and you know, you and I reconnected and it's like, we've known each other a long time, but like, where do you think, and, and what do you want to see happen with like technology and digital changing on a daily basis? Like literally, where do you want your brand to go? I mean, is it, is it Don Del Russo is more on TV or like, are you, are you still loving like the multi channel? You're like, you're the brand, but like, you're kind of on everything. Yeah, no, I love the, I love the, to be across the channels, but my, I, I think I'd say in the next like two years, my goal is to create a show um, um, that I can put on like a streaming type of show that would end up on a, uh, it could be YouTube or Netflix. I mean, YouTube has now their like original series that they're doing, um, Netflix, Hulu, all of them. And I think that's the direction that I would like to see myself going. And I honestly think it's going to be mixing food and fashion. I mean, that's honestly I was where just going to say, like, I, it can't just be fashion because now, um, so let's talk yeah. about that kind of briefly too, yeah. about like you getting into cooking and, and you can follow, what is it? La Dolce? La Dolce Cuoca. Yeah. Okay. That's that the sweet, that sweet cook in Italian. That's her. The sweet yes. cook. <laughs> exactly. So um, how, yeah. How I, happen? Tell me about that. I've, I've always, I've loved cooking and it's, it started so by accident uh, which some really good things do. I, <laughs> I was posting on when, when Instagram started doing stories, I would come home late at late, not late at night, but eight, nine o'clock at night. And I, in my kitchen, I would put my phone down like this on the counter and it would look directly into like the cutting board and the pan that I was cooking in. And I would just show what I was cooking. It was a really anything I made was like in 20 minutes because I was hungry. It was nine o'clock at night and I needed to eat something good. And I, I love to cook and I like to make myself full meals. So it wasn't just like a quick, like, you know, I bought it in the store and I'm just heating it up. I made actual full dinners mm -hmm. and I just was posting it because it was like, Hey, this is what I'm doing now. And I started getting more attention on that. <laughs> it was a shift everybody's like wait what is she doing she's cooking let me yeah. see. <laughs> and it was like how'd you make that can you send me that recipe where did you get that where i have since then i started sending so many recipes and i was writing these recipes like you know just writing them up really quickly and i luckily was saving them all in my um in my notes in my phone. So I said about a year and a half ago, I didn't want, I was getting worried because people wanted pictures and <laughs> it was like this whole thing. And I said, I can't put this on my Instagram. My Instagram is all fashion and you know, it's more business. It's, it's all the brands that know me, know me for fashion. How am I going to start throwing in these like food pictures? And for me, it's like this organization thing. So I said, let me just start the separate page. I could direct people there. It won't be conflicting with anything. And I started putting the pictures and the recipes on. Let me tell you, the engagement on there, I don't have a lot of followers, but the engagement on there is, in, it blows my mind. 
people just are like, the very, they're very interested, right? <laughs> yes. Um, which even more proves you can have 200 followers. And if those, mm -hmm. if those 200 people love everything, they're going to buy everything. They're going to want everything. They're going to, you know, right. do everything over there more than 5,000 followers who you maybe get like two people interested. Exactly. It's just, you know, it's amazing. So yeah, so I started doing more of the cooking and posting and writing the recipes. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Farinolio. It's in um, right. Westfield. It's this yes. adorable little uh, Italian bakery. They have like, a, a, oh, their sandwiches are amazing. Anyway, my friend works there and she wanted to start over this whole quarantine time started one you know wanted to do some more videos so I started doing more videos with with her yeah and we started talking and she's like you need to do more you have to do more it's so good and that's how these longer style cooking videos came about is from is from her though. kind of pushing I've learned, yeah, I've I learned, learned a couple things. of things. I mean, you went live a couple of times too. And I was like, oh, let me watch this. Let me see what she's making. And it's so funny. Yeah. You took a behind the scenes photo of you doing the live and it's yeah. like your sister's in the background, the baby's in the background. Yeah. Like, yeah. like there's like a, there's like a whole team of people, but it's like your family. In the oh, yeah. background. I yeah. love Which I have to say, I think that's how I basically grew up. Our, and that's why the food for me is such a passion. Um, I grew up in an Italian family and they, all I knew was cooking all day long. We're at breakfast talking about dinner. I mean, you, you <laughs> probably know. Yeah. It's a constant conversation yeah. of food and I love it. And it's like, you know, sharing recipes and my, I was surrounded by my mom, my aunts, my grandmother, even my dad, like everyone always cooking. You never walked into a house and there wasn't food cooking happening for tomorrow, for next week, for a neighbor. It just, that's just always been Normal. the thing. And yeah. Yeah. And so, and for me, it kind of just, it, it continued to be that way. It's, I have a story from high school. I would have friends over and my parents were away one weekend and, you know, like a normal high school student uh, person would do, I had people over and I think I was like 16 or 17 and um I had it ended up turning into like a little bit of a party and I knew I would get in trouble but it was funny because at the end of the late at night it was like two o'clock in the morning and my friends a couple of guy friends said to me we're you know everybody's hungry what could we eat and I made this big pot of sauce They're like what's pot. that <laughs> like who has like, Who had normal? A party in high school? <laughs> it sounds very normal to me. Because if it, if you were my friend in high school, you're like my Italian friend. I'd be like, oh, all right, she's gonna make sauce. Like I wouldn't yeah. think twice about it. That's so, so funny. Like, you know, we didn't order food. We didn't like have hot dogs and hamburgers. I was like making a pot of sauce From scratch over the stove. That's so funny. That's, but, but that's just like, that's the authenticity of like how you grew up. It's like, we really growing up too, like, it's like, oh, we're going out to eat. Not really. Like going out to eat is like special. It is. <laughs> you know? it is. And it's never, it's weird because it just, it's never enjoyed the same as like at home cooking. We yeah. always say it. We're like, we love, you know, we love going out. I love going out to eat, but it's just never the same as that. Like, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, and kind of just maybe we'll round out our, our conversation here, but, um, so I noticed what you're doing too, is like, you've been doing, hosting your own zoom, private zoom chats where you're kind of like inviting in select people, right. Yes. To kind of yes. learn about how to work with brands, which I thought was very cool. Yeah. So is that something that you're still working on? And I, am. I have another one. I think I have to see this September 9th coming out and I wanted to do it not as just like a video that someone bought and paid for and they buy a video and they watch, but an, an interactive, uh, private live where we can have question and answers. I basically go through everything, my whole process of, um, how I, how you can organically work with brands starting by not knowing them all the way to like how, once you have that relationship creating, um, I send, I, I usually send them, uh, 
three different documents, the email for what to say, you know, like exactly wow. full email of how to reach out mm -hmm. and what you would say. And then a follow-up email with ideas. So the best thing to do with working with a brand is you want to present ideas. Like you right. want to say to them, okay, Hey, I'm so glad you wrote back to me or I'm following up. I know we kind of talked and you, and you said you might be interested. Here's four different pitches, ideas that I think would work for your brand. And that's after getting to know the brand, you might say, Hey, let's put this cool video together where I take your, the makeup and I put it on my, show my eyes before and show them after and right. you know, whatever it is. Anyway, presenting the ideas. And so I, I give people the, the, the first email, the second one, and then also a spreadsheet of how to track everything because tracking wow. is so important. And you want to be able to say like, okay, this is the timeline and this is the deliverables. This is what they add. They want two photos on Instagram and they want a video and I'm going to get to them, get to that in this timeline. And then, um, are they paying you? Are they sending you products? So you're really giving like the templates and like the process. And yes. so that's the value in kind of having, if you're in, if anyone is interested in this, that's yes. how they connect with you you kind of like work out that process for them to come yeah. into, the, and into the class. It, yes, exactly. Yeah. And then afterwards, so I'm not, I'm, I know for me, it's like when I first started learning everything, I needed someone to talk to and I needed to ask, you know, like a, even if it was a simple question, I needed that. And so that's what I'm there for too. So it's not just like you take a class and it's gone, but there's yeah. actual like real, I'm there send me an email. Let's hop on the phone and talk through what they, what the brand said to you or what's going you're on. Like a mentor. You're a mentor yeah. is what I think in that yeah. industry too. And I think, like you said, back in like 2009, 10, like you weren't labeling yourself as an influencer, but I think now you are the mentor because yes. it's like, here's how you work with a PR company. Here's how you work with a brand. Here's what you say. Here's what you don't say. You know, I think, exactly. I, I, think there's a, I think there's a lot of unspoken rules and I think I think like that influencer idea is like blown up because it, so many people just have like wrong ideas about how it works. Proper being proper still is like, it, you, still it have to, you still have to create good content and yeah. you still have to be proper in your process. Yeah. You and know? no brand. I mean, I've been in the brand position. I've, I've worked in, especially having a boutique. I know what it was like. And if someone even then would reach out and be like, Hey, can you send 50 of these items for us to put in a gift bag? It was like, well, why? Or for what? Or what do you, so like, I think it's, it goes, the same thing goes for now where it's like, Hey, can you send me your product? Well, for what, you know, what are we, what are you going to do? Why? Right. And I, I think a lot of people feel like they can just reach out and say, Hey, I love your lipstick. Can you send me a sample of it? explain why make a give a reason you know talk have a conversation with them the way you would with anyone else and make it you know purposeful and useful and beneficial to them where they want to say hey yeah let's work together even though you mm -hmm. have 500 followers i know that out of those 500 followers 40 of them are going to buy this because that's right. how much you have an impact on them so your next class is september so someone can find you online and connect for, yes, for I'm gonna actually put, I usually post it on my stories about oh, um, when it is, but if, yeah, you can DM me. I okay. always answer. My DMs are probably the easiest place to reach out. I know. I, that's where I talk to you. I'm like, what are you doing? Hi. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. like, I see it fast. It's easy. Yeah. So I want to thank you. And, you know, I think we're, we're coming to an end on our time here, but thank you so much. This was so like unbelievably, um, you know, it just makes me happy because you and I just have like this like long-term time connective yeah. thing. Like we both love social media. We both love digital. We're both Italian. That's how like we actually connect. That was the whole, like, yeah. <laughs> that was like the real reason in the beginning. Um, so I have like a theme going with my podcast. I feel like there's a lot of Italian going on, but yeah. um, so anyone can find you on Instagram or any of the platforms. It's Dawn Del Russo and um, Dawn, thank you. You're mm -hmm. awesome. You look awesome. Thank Quarantine, you. like oh you're God. like doing good. You Thanks. Are doing great. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I will um I will speak to you soon. But if Thank anyone you. wants to find Dawn or do anything else like Any live Q and A, I, I love mean, answering questions. Don't be scared. It's I love it. So <laughs> I know. I know. See, that's the thing. It's like reach out to people who yeah. know what they're doing. Like exactly. that's, ask questions. Right. That's the best. Yes. Listen, but ask questions. Yes. All right. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.